yeah now uh, for Python we have uh, only one main library it's now what we call it now a framework it's called uh, frictionless Py. Um, so it's on Git on GitHub on um, uh, uh, <clears throat> the PyP and uh, we still uh, maintain our prior uh, our like previous um, generation libraries and uh, fix bugs and merge pull requests and they uh, still support Python 2 and this framework is uh, solely for Python 3. So yeah, I think I need to, uh, I need to um, quickly introduce the framework because my uh, presentation is uh, mostly about uh, the transform uh, capabilities, but uh, yeah, I think I need to go through uh, the whole thing firstly. So yeah, so uh, the uh, frictionless framework uh, has four main uh, directions or aspects or actions. It's for describing data and uh, it means like uh, creating uh, metadata for your data. And as uh, I think many of you know that uh, um, the initial idea was to create uh, data specifications, uh, frictional specifications and was only about metadata how to describe uh, like your resource what's name of your resource what's uh, columns your data has and uh, this part describing data is uh, the uh, causes to the friction specifications and uh, so a simple use case you run um, friction uh, friction describe command it uh, returns uh, schema metadata for example what's your data types in your table you save it you uh, can edit it in like as, as uh, yaml or json and uh, then uh, validate your data based on your based on like inferred metadata and your edits and uh, the second part is uh, extracting data and uh, basically it's uh, I think the simplest part it's about data reading so um, yeah, mostly it's it's like um, it, it's uh, I think kind of like um, synthetic part of the framework because uh, we read data all the time and probably it could uh, might be omitted as it's kind of like synthetic action but consider you need to uh, like quickly read uh, HTML table from somewhere and you just run frictions extract and you can see what's your like data as table or something from database at uh, etc but um, yeah, so the next one is a uh, data validation and it was previously known as good tables and uh, now it's a, it's a part of, uh, friction of the frictions framework. And uh, um, aside of from minor um, API changes, it's basically the same. So you previously you uh, ran good tables validate in Python or in a command line interface and now you can do the same with frictionless validate. So it's really close to what good tables uh, was. Still it is, we still support good tables. And uh, there, there is a new part called uh, transform data. It, previously it was, we had a project called data package pipelines and uh, also data flows. Uh, written by Adam Karif. Um, so, but we, uh, we uh, have never like had some um, built-in method of that transformation 
performation means like uh, adding fields, uh, filtering roles, sorting, like drawing tables. And uh, now it's, uh, it's an attempt to uh, incorporate a transform transformation into uh, like one framework. It's, it's not based on data faults, it's based on, on the PETL project. And uh, yeah, also I think I need to mention that uh, describing data part is a kind of replacement. It's, it's not like exactly describing data, but at least these two is uh, are like a replacement of uh, table schema and the package libraries. So validating is a replacement of good tables and transform data you can use for example, instead of data package pipelines. Uh, because transform is uh, really new and um, it's still uh, quite raw. So the design like architecture is almost in place, but uh, we might, uh, or you might uh, run into some bugs problems. So currently I recommend to start like playing with, with the transform API, uh, but uh, not to use it in production. Also, like for data um, wrangling or something like this, sometimes there is no like uh, real production. You just need to like, uh, do your research or something. So probably it's fine. But uh, please uh, feel free to um, report any problems and maybe missing steps, for example. I just, uh, working today on the presentation, I realized that we just really miss like uh, field rename step, for example, because uh, I wanted to rename a field and there uh, wasn't a step for it. I mean, step, it's a part of transformation pipeline. Okay, so um, yeah, it was a quick introduction. So let me show you, uh, the main topic. Um, also, yeah, we, we I think we haven't uh, shared it yet, but uh, now, we, as you can see, uh, now we have a, a framework documentation portal, which uh, I hope uh, will improve like documentation, uh, reading experience. Uh, we have, uh, we started to do like a proper cross-linking, like it supports um, uh, field, for example, what I was saying, field, field remove. Yeah, it supports like proper uh, search. So also if you uh, uh, spot something like suspicious on this side, like a bug or something, please also report. Um, and uh, yeah, and regarding uh, reporting errors, um, now it's only one repository. Uh, also, even 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 if you need to like fix something in like tabulator or good tables or uh, libraries like this, feel free just to use this uh, issue tracker. Okay, um, so yeah, let me share you um, new transform uh, transforming data API so um, it's uh, it's uh, in the guides section you can read because it's kind of like a long read uh, relatively um, under the in the guide section it's called uh, transforming data there are two articles uh, the main article uh, about uh, basics and uh, uh, main concepts and the second about uh, included uh, transformation steps. So, um, yeah, so in a few words, um, the transform uh, API is, uh, is created to be like as much as uh, close, as much as possible close to 
um, concepts you already use is frictionless. For example, um, you just create uh, so like the main probably object in friction. So it was the main project in data package library resource. And then you just use this resource uh, as a part of uh, transform call. So um, it's quite simple that just uh, you have a resource like data table and you apply transformation steps. Like nothing more except for two the uh, these two ideas and uh, also you can transform packages and uh, it's kind of nested so you like transform your you also create package separately and you um, can for example add a resource and then uh, you can transform uh, resources within the package within the package uh, like as a nested uh, transform call. Um, also, we are working on on the pipeline. Capability, it's a declar declarative way uh, to define your transformation pipeline. And uh, it's uh, even like less tested than uh, the transform API in general, but uh, uh, it's uh, it will be like really useful for uh, frictions um, server API and uh, like some uh, some like cases when you need to share your pipelines declaratively not not as a code but uh, for now I think it's uh, it makes sense just to omit the pipeline thing and talk about like transforming resources and packages. Um, yeah, this article includes some high-level overview of uh, how it works. And uh, you can also create uh, custom steps. And uh, as I said, it's based on uh, on the PETL uh, library, which is uh, kind of like a battle-tested so uh, it supports about like um, a few hundreds of uh, transforms, I think. I think, and uh, we try to make uh, like the API nicer, just reworking uh, how transform steps um, grouped and named. So we have uh, less than a few hundreds, just because we kind of like grouped some steps, like instead of having like 10 join steps, we have uh, one that uh, accept um, options like join, right join, left join, outer join, etc. So yeah, there is a second article. Uh, it describes um, the built-in steps, which you can find uh, as a part of core frictions framework. And um, it's uh, grouped by uh, like transformation um, targets. So just uh, to make it easier to find the step you need, uh, you just think what you're going to change or affect. So for example, if you need to um, convert a cell, just uh, uh, one cell in a row, uh, related to some uh, field, so you you look for cell steps, or if you, if you need to filter rows, you uh, look uh, for row steps, and uh, adding, removing fields, field steps. Uh, I think the most uh, complex uh, is uh, table steps, it, because it uh, includes some um, sophisticated um, operations like join or melt, recast, transpose, and, uh, and uh, on, the, on the data package level, you can also uh, work with um, resource steps, like adding, removing resources. That's, uh, it's the uh, smaller group because uh, 
is still like uh, data transformations is about like resource resource mean like it means a data table and uh, usually work on a, on a data table rather than uh, <coughs> rather than uh, managing like resources within a data set um okay so yeah i think it was an introduction and yeah i need to say it again that uh, it's kind of like raw and i'm i'm just exactly now like working on fixing some problems uh with uh performance and by design performance should be uh really good because uh comparing for example uh to data flows uh it's uh, it doesn't cast your data on like on every step and uh, also has uh, some uh, important like design level like architecture level improvements i hope i mean uh, of course that of course has like its own uh, strengths but uh, but uh, in like lower level we still uh, facing some problems so probably at the moment uh, like request table will not work but i'm I'm working on a fix. Um, yeah, so I'm going to show a quick, small example, just like that, running. And uh, I, I decided it to be about uh, cars. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, so yeah, I created the collab notebook. It's a uh, second okay i think um we'll share the link later um sorry um so it's a, a co-op is a google's project and it's basically a jupyter notebook just uh, hosted by uh google uh, by google um google research project um so yeah it's it's very simple just to show the idea and kind of like regarding like data um research is it's useless but at least something so uh yeah we start from installing uh, frictionless and we also need two plugins and you can install plugins uh, using this uh, Python notation so we install a HTML plugin and a pandas plugin so and uh, first uh, yeah so it's, it's uh, um, grouped by uh, resource we are working on and the first resource so the idea that i found this uh, i found this uh, article in wikipedia and uh, it provides information about um, um, electric cars and i was interested um, by like uh, their share um, in the whole uh, cars population by country so in wikipedia it's not really um uh machine readable it's human readable M maybe i can uh, i can actually like export it as a cc but i just didn't try um uh, for just for uh, demonstrational purpose so let's say we have something like not in on wikipedia but somewhere else it's a table kind of like for people it's it's uh, uh there uh, there is a mix uh of uh, numbers and like notes uh texts so it's not you can just uh exp you can just like copy and uh pass it into excel it will not work because it's just for humans mostly so what we do is uh what we do is uh, we create uh, cars resource, so frictionless resource, and 
what we do is we use a transform function from frictionless and it accept, accepts a resource. First argument is a resource. And in our case, it's kind of like a raw resource, raw data table. So um, we uh, use this link, we, we name this resource, we say that it's a HTML and also uh, the most important thing for, for this example that uh, we use a HTML, HTML dialect and uh, set a selector like CC selector to find this table. It's um, like there are few tables, but um, just uh, you need to believe me, this one uh, has this uh, selector and uh, So uh, having this resource, we just have this table as it is with these like uh, headings and uh, messy data cells. And uh, what we do is uh, applying transformation steps. First of all, we, mm -hmm. first of all, uh, we limit uh, the table because uh, it also includes uh, these two rows. We um, we um, convert uh, country. Sorry, we convert the country name because it has uh, nodes and uh, also um, sorry. about my leakage um, yeah so basically it's really similar to I guess many of you do just working with data uh, it's a simple um, uh, simple um, string manipulation so we remove uh, this thing from country we uh, change the we add a new new um, field called share and uh, extracting a number from this um, column. So as a result, also we uh, remove all, all the fields except for country and share. And as a result, we just run this code and we get um, uh, a schema containing two fields, country, and share, and as you can see, share is a number. It's, it was like automatically inferred. And uh, we just uh, read uh, first five uh, rows. And so basically from uh, this table, we got we got a table like this, just two columns and it's already cleaned. Um, the second part, and a few things to uh, mention. Um, so uh, the idea of the framework is uh, to make things composable. So uh, you create this cars uh, resource and you can reuse it later. So even though you have already like read some roles, you can then open it again or use in next uh, transformation step or join somewhere I'll, I'll show so just uh, keep in mind that we have this cars resource second one is uh, yeah yeah I didn't like say that uh, what I was going to check but uh, it's related to uh, electrical car share and uh, like uh, GDP domestic product, it's really like a na naive uh, idea, but I just wanted to check maybe there is a correlation or something. So uh, also I wanted to show how to use existing data packages. So I just found this GDP data package. I, I would rather use uh, GDP per capita, but uh, we have uh, GDP only. So I just found this uh, data package and uh, 
found the data package descriptor and created uh, this data package like in Python and asked to just uh, return me a GDP like first resource. And uh, similar to the first step, uh, we apply some transformation steps to get the data we need because it's initially it has like a country code and it, um, it also uh, provides information for uh, many years. So it's, uh, it's not only like for uh, 2016, but also includes uh, historical data. And uh, yeah, and uh, as an output on this step, uh, we also um, got a two column two column table having uh, country and uh, value columns. Here we go. Yeah. So for example, for one country, there there are many many. Uh, values uh, for every like year available historically. So uh, now we have um, two uh, resources, two tables. And uh, when we um, talk about uh, tabular data, a resource is a, is the same thing uh, as, ta as a table. So, uh, if you have non-tabular data, resource can be like a PDF or something, but in our case, it's kind of like interchangeable. Um, and yeah, the second thing I wanted to add um, when I was talking about uh, this step, that uh, second important uh, principle of, uh, of the frictionless transform that um, uh, basically uh, under, uh, the underlying PETL library does uh, re uh, really similar things, but what uh, frictionless ads is uh, metadata handling. So you always get not only your data, but also metadata. So if you uh, add a field, it's not only a field in a CSV, it will be added into your data package, for example, or data resource. So as you can see, uh, all these manipulations uh, are reflected uh, in, a, in a schema, in a resulting schema. So yeah, my idea to check a correlation. And uh, here we use a correlation between um, share of electrical cars and uh, uh, domestic products. And here we use a join step. It's, uh, it's more advanced than like simple steps because it, it joins uh, two tables. It's uh, the same as uh, in CQL. And you have like uh, two tables having the ID column and you uh, say like join them and uh, there will be one table and uh, based on uh, the ID column. So in our case, we join uh, our um, cars and uh, product resources, product, right? Yes. And uh, we get uh, a combined table just uh, from these and these data sources. And it's already like cleaned and uh, simplified. I mean, columns are uh, not used, columns are removed. So um, what we can do with frictionless, we can export to pandas. Just you might be like, really familiar with pandas and have experience. So just uh, after initial like data describing extracting validation, you can just uh, opt out to use some another instrument, SQL, pandas, uh, BigQuery. Um, we are working on uh, the Elasticsearch support because it uh, provides like a lot of good visualizations. And uh, in this case, I used pandas. 
and uh, basically yeah, it's really <laughs> it's really just funny a funny example of uh, creating a plot and a bar chart and uh, uh, as a like a small scientist i just uh, get this that uh, it seems that uh, overall gdp uh, of the country uh, doesn't really affect or affect negatively on a share of uh, electrical cars but if it uh, like used uh, if you used uh, if we have used uh, uh, GDP per capita, probably we will find a like proper correlation because, for example, Norway have a lot of uh, electrical vehicles, and I think GDP per capita is really uh, impressive. So yeah, my experiment just failed, but it it wasn't the point. So the last thing I just wanted to show that uh, after all you can have this because uh, parts are reusable you just use these uh, resources you created before you just use them to create a package and uh, you can export it to SQL for example here is an example of just I run this against my uh, test database and I got I got uh, tables uh, on my SQL server. You can do the same, uh, for example, exporting it to a zip uh, ar archive. And uh, also, we're working now on fixing some problems uh, with uh, this export, but it will be resolved uh, anyway, like very quickly. But and uh, this framework is hopefully will be used like for and it will be stable for kind of like uh, foreseeable future. So once we um, resolve some minor problems we have, I think it will be really useful. So you might uh, use here like package to zip and then that data path. And uh, then you can just share this uh, uh, data uh, zip archive with your like colleague and uh, he or she uh, might continue your experiment, for example, switching to GDP per capita. And uh, basically, I think um, that's it.